if anybody is watching from a headphone manufacturer, why don't you include a single-ended cable? Why? Is it because you think it makes your product feel more premium that you only include a balanced cable? And these cables can't be that expensive. Seems like these are always coming in great packaging. Why don't you forego that and just include a single-ended connector? Because most people, especially most people that aren't quite into headphones but are into hi-fi, most people don't have a balanced headphone amp. Most. And this is a small hobby to begin with. And then you want to start slicing and dicing it up to people that only have balanced headphone amps. No, just put a single ended headphone cable in there because maybe somebody want to hook this up to their vintage receiver or something else that only has a single ended headphone output. Anyway, sorry, rant over. These are the, the I audio, the Wraith. They're a pair of open back headphones, I think for $550. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about these wraiths. Sensitivity, 101 dB. Not terrible to drive. I had these hooked up to the Gishelli Labs J2, going on high gain, feeding that into an Arkle 3 Pro, going on low gain. I feel like it's row gain, low gain. Anyway, when I was on high gain, I had the volume knob all the way to the bottom by eight o'clock. I didn't care for that, so it was on low gain. You may be able to get away with a dongle DAC with these. I would go with something a little bit more substantial. All right, build quality, shockingly awesome. These are probably the best, most well-built headphones that I've had in outside of something like the Odyssey LCD X. There's a little bit of sharp edges here on the ear cup cover. Got a metal band going in here. You got kind of a leather strap, probably not real leather, floaty floaty. And that moves up and down to get the fit you want. Nice screws everywhere. So this thing looks like it could be completely rebuilt if you needed it to be rebuilt. Even up here, you have screws. Ear cups are made out of metal and it terminates in a 2.5 millimeter ear cup termination. So this comes with a balanced cable, but if you're trying to run this single-ended, you're gonna need 2.5 millimeter single-ended terminations on your headphone cable. I didn't like that. Why? Because while this headphone is built very well, the only cable it comes with, 4.4 Pentagon cable. And guess what? I don't listen to balanced headphone amps anymore. I listen to the Arkle 3 Pro. That's my reference headphone amp. This cable is okay, but just about every headphone I've gotten in has moved away from the 2.5 millimeter connection for a 3.5 millimeter connection. So that's kind of a head scratcher for me. And it, it's a huge head scratcher here. If anybody is watching from a headphone manufacturer, why don't you include a single-ended cable? Why? Is it because you think it makes your product feel more premium that you only include a balanced cable? And these cables can't be that expensive. Seems like these are always coming in great packaging. Why don't you forego that and just include a single-ended connector? Because most people, especially most people that aren't quite into headphones but are into hi-fi, most people don't have a balanced headphone amp. Most. And this is a small hobby to begin with. And then you want to start slicing and dicing it up to people that only have balanced headphone amps. No, just put a single ended headphone cable in there because maybe somebody want to hook this up to their vintage receiver or something else that only has a single ended headphone output. Anyway, sorry, rant over. This really makes me mad that it's balanced only. But just because you have a balanced connection doesn't make your product better. Ear pads. Comes with three different types of ear pads. One, by the way, they're all attached via Velcro, which is going to be an item of contention for a lot of people. Okay, so you have perforated fake leather. That's ear pad number one. That's the one that comes installed on it. And it comes with a pair of velour ear pads. It's number two. And it comes with some straight up fake leather 
No perforation ear pads. Okay. All with Velcro attachment. I think this is probably the best built headphone I've had in under a thousand dollars with the exception of changing out the ear pads. I don't know if you're going to see it. I got it on video last night, but this right here, this is where the Velcro goes. This started to peel off the first time that I changed out the ear pads. I was able to stick it back down, but this, if you change out the ear pads quite often, it's not going to last. You're going to have to get some new special 3M adhesive or something like that. However, may not matter at all. Let's talk about how they sound. <laughs> Shoot to Thrill, ACDC, Back in Black album. Listen to that song over and over and over and over again. Once with all three different ear pads installed. Once on the Hyphaman Sundara. Once on the Edition XS from Hyphaman, which so happens to be one of my favorite headphones. It comes in at $500, which is $50 less expensive than the The Audio Wraith. And then back to the Wraith. This isn't going to be good for the Wraiths. Okay. So they installed pads. The upper mid-range, mid-range vocals were slightly veiled. Percussion, especially snare drum percussion, was also recessed and not clean or clear. Top end was a little bit recessed and, if anything, rolled off. The velour was slightly better with upper mid-range clarity and symbols so it brought up a little bit of that dip but these aren't dipped in a way that is like kind of like a rock eq these are kind of dipped in a strange way i don't know i'll kind of get into it in the final thoughts when i talk about what eq i put on these leather i just have in my notes a mess it's like a warm blanket over the entire frequency range. I just have it's a mess. So the full leather pads did not go back on. And I burned these in too. I made sure that these ran for like 30 hours straight. So if they're not burnt in after 30 hours, then, oh, well, too bad, I guess. All right, Uninvited, Alanis Morissette off the MTV Unplugged record. Her voice was stepped back and veiled. And that was with the installed ear pads, which I felt were the best. There's also some weird resonance. God's gonna cut you down by Johnny Cash. His voice was nice and full on these, so I did like the presentation of his vocals on the Wraiths. However, there's some claps in the background throughout that entire song, and there was just no definition to that clap. It just seemed almost like it was in another room. Redemption Song by Bob Marley, same story. While his vocals were engaging a little bit from a baritone perspective, his acoustic guitar had no reverb or less reverb than on other headphones, namely the Edition XS and the Sundara. So this is going to be a pretty quick review. What are my final thoughts? The build quality is the absolute standout thing about these headphones. They are built so well, and I was so excited when I pulled these out of the box, thinking to myself, well, first of all, I had no idea what they cost, so I was really interested to look these up and find out what their price was. When they were $550, I'm like, oh my goodness, if these sound as good as the Sonars or the Edition XS, these are going to be incredible. These are going to be the best new headphone out there. Guess what? They didn't sound like them at all. And it's a shame because these are so well built. Um, open back, they don't seem to change the tone of my voice when I put these on at all. Just a little bit of a slight muffle in my voice. So it's not like it's not like completely open. And if anything, like the upper portion of my voice vocal range is a little bit nasally. And I don't feel like I'm that nasally right now. And I think something with the design gives a little bit of resonance in the upper mid-range. I forgot to mention Hello by Adele. At the one minute mark, she starts to go up in the range. Anyway, it's at the one minute mark. She goes way up. Uh, there's resonance issues with these headphones, regardless of the pads that I wore. After I put these on for Shoot to Thrill, they didn't go back on because they, it was just, 
it was just a veiled mess. And I don't know why anybody would want to listen to that style of a headphone. And I haven't really heard that style of a headphone, but like overly warm headphones that don't provide any detail. Like I don't get that. Like you could just take a crappy headphone and then cover it up with like three or four pieces of paper towel. And then you would have like a warm headphone that costs a whole bunch of money. Like I don't, like if you're out there and you're a headphone aficionado, like what is the point of this warm, non-detailed sound signature? And I don't want to hear, well, you can listen to music all day on it. Because you can listen to music all day on a headphone that has a flatter frequency response, as long as there's not like a spike at 2K or something. I just don't get it. I, there's nothing good about listening to the race through the fully pleather pads. Uh, bass was neither thin nor did it stand out. I would say between the build quality and the bass, those are probably the two best parts of this headphone. And the bass wasn't like outstanding. I wasn't doing backflips about it. It was the most clearly defined portion of the frequency range because the mids were veiled and the treble was veiled. But I would, I would rather have like plastic headphones that are less expensive that sound better and some that are built like perfectly <laughs> like I love these their build quality I will say though that they are a little tight and the ear pads that I think that sounded the best were also a little stiff and so these were pushing in right here on me so after I listened to them for a while I have these on backwards after I listened to these for a while I did feel hot spots not only under my ear like on my jaw but also a little bit over my ear. I'm sure I could stretch these out, bend these into place and everything would be okay, but I didn't want to do that. I just left them as is. And my head's big, but it's not like super big. So I did try to EQ these a little bit through the Weem Mini. They have a 10 band EQ. What I kind of landed on was I cut 500 Hertz by about 1K to kind of try to clean up the mid range a little bit. I boosted 1K by about 1.5 dB and then 2K by 1 dB, which is really out of character for me. Usually I'm cutting 2K at all times. So that really tells me that the mids on these things are really recessed. 4K I popped up 2 dB, 8K 3 dB, and 16K 4 dB, because the, I feel like the treble is really rolled off. I was just doing this too. I don't know if you can hear that, but that sounds a little loose to me. And when you hear something like this, that almost always causes resonance issues. A vibrate, you know, like, um, ever seen the people go ah, with like a wine glass and so the resonant frequency of whatever's going on right here, not gonna be good. Now you could probably take care of that by just screwing it down, but the other one sounds the same way too. You can almost hear it ring too, like an aluminum platter. Whew. Compared to the Haifaman, Sundara, and the Edition XS, these were just pretty much embarrassed for me, for my personal listening. But I like kind of a little bit of balance, a little bit of bump on the bass. Tons of clarity. Tons of The more clarity, the better. The more open, the better. That's another thing. Since these didn't have much going on on the top end, I just felt like they weren't big at all from a soundstage perspective. I'm really disappointed. Um, for my uses, this would not be a headphone that I would consider purchasing. If you're into warmth, I guess, and some mids that don't have a ton of detail, I guess maybe these are for you, but they're they're just not for me. So if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon. Patreon.com slash cheap audio man. Every Sunday night we have Patreon only Zooms, Patreon only Discord, Patreon only Facebook group. You can also sign up for Tidal. Rune or Amazon Music, links in the description. Click, sign up. They usually have a trial period. Even if you quit, I still get a couple of bucks though. You can also use the affiliate links in the description, which means if you click on something and buy it, I get a commission, but it doesn't cost you anymore. So it's great to support the channel. And then finally, you can buy me a cup of coffee down at the bottom of the video. There's a thanks button. If you liked it, you can put a little money in the tip jar, but don't feel compelled to tip me or buy me any coffee or anything else. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Binge listen, probably not through the the uh, audio Wraith headphones. Keep the design, fix the ear pad connection, and then completely retune them or use a different driver. Because the package is awesome. The sound, not so much. Anyway, 
Get yourself some headphones and fill yourself with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man.